Hey guys, Parm P. Brew News. Back again with a mystery beer review. A mystery brew review of the brew review mysteriness. We got a 12 ouncer today. We've been doing 16 ouncers since. We have a few more 16s. We have like three 12s. So I'm going to get these 12s out of the way. <sighs> this is not the technically finishing of a day. It's more the belated... Oh, super early start of a day, so I figured I could treat myself for a little bit before I really get cracking. I cut the label off, so we're going to crack it open. I'm just so happy that while cutting things off prior to actually drinking them, I haven't actually cut through any um, bottles yet, or cans yet, which I'm quite actually surprised. Nothing that Another thing that surprised me, I know I'm putting the can here, it's just nothing, you know. But I did it anyway. The one thing that surprised me, because the magic of these wonderful little uh, mystery beer reviews. Also, Matt from Massive Beer Reviews, I've mentioned him already a few times about the mystery thing. So, posted all the mystery things. They're super, super, go check out his channel is what I'm trying to say. I mean, don't, obviously. But, um, well, you can always dislike stuff. Anyway, there is a shit ton of alcohol legs on this one sticking to the glass the brewery in my brewery glass lots of proteins rising up the side indicative of hopefully of a very nice body cocoa colored head absolutely and just jet black the black of the pitchness is very in this crazy ass glass all oh, right didn't really expect this i was actually expecting an ipa or something like that and then this beast is kind of emanated out of the out of the the precipice of the class of the can like raw. so that's pretty awesome subtle hints of a dark fruit in there subtle hints of almost a, a raisin but underneath that uh, way underneath and on uh, top of that I'm getting the coffees a little bit of hint of milk chocolate and the roasty toasty goodness, of course, little char smoke. Let us proceed. Cheers. It's a bit thin. It's a bit thin. But being a bit thin, it's the low side of a full mouthfeel, so it's still fine. Um, there is a lot of ethanol alcohol notes I'm getting out of this. So there is a little hints, some hints of a, a little uh, fruit in there coming, like a raisin, a little bit of a juicy, like a darker fruit. I think it's coming from the ethanol alcohols more so than from um, ingredients, I should say. Hi, dog. Dog's in here. Super smooth. The ethanol alcohols are there. They're kind of... Aromat the aromaticity of the alcohols are going across the palate and you're breathing them out. But overall, soft, soft hints of roasty toasty earthiness, little soft hint of a nuttiness. Uh, very nice creamy body. Um, I have to assume a, a very oatmeal-esque body going through. The slightest hint of a, like a baker's chocolate. I really pulled a lot of sweetness out of the milk chocolate aspect, and it's not getting all charry and grim and evil like the like a like a dark chocolate. Just a little bit of a baker's chocolate in there, smooth, smooth, transcending mouthfeel. But there's not a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of roasty toasty, little hints of roasty toasty goodness, little back end of an earth of this, little back end of a nuttiness. You get a little hint of a coffee roast kind of going on. Uh, it's definitely not bitter. It is definitely not a bitter. The biggest thing about this beer so far is the ethanol al alcohol so that I'm getting out of it for me. And I don't believe that's probably an adjunct. I think it's actually just the alcohol. So you get this, the, the fruits from that. Subtle fruits. Don't give me, It's not a fruit bowl or anything. It's the subtle raisins and stuff from the alcohol. And then, boy, it's a boring beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's just not a lot going on. They're, they're there. They're subtle. But for what you want, you want to, like, I don't even, I can't even tell 
that I just drank something that's obviously trying to be an Imperial Porter, probably an Imperial Stout. And I have no fucking clue. You know what I mean? It's that smooth, but yet that undescribable. Or remarkable, not remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one was a little bit on the brighter side when I had it. And it gave a little bit more of a soft earthiness, roasty toasty earthiness from some, a little bit more coffee in there. Walking around. Yeah, pretty much. A little bit of baker's chocolate, a little bit of hints of coffee now and again. Boom, 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 boom. Roasty toasty, a little brown bread. A uh, pretty nice body. That body actually was hint of a thinner note on that time for some reason the more i wafted around it got a little bit on to the high side of a medium instead of the low side of a full kind of tapers in those little sections but overall it's pretty good would i be happy if i made it absolutely wow six minutes and 13 seconds talking about a beer i thought i said was boring well, that's fun um a little bit more of a charry bitterness that is starting to build slowly. So now that I can actually taste that I drank something. Oh yeah, here it is. I don't know what it is. Mm, no idea. <clears throat> uh, there's nothing that's shining through. They're like, oh, well, that's got this in it. No, nothing. Uh, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 without a problem. What is it? Oscar Blues 1050. Wow. Yeah, you know what? That's really funny because I've had some 1050 and I've been drinking 1050 recently and I've been thinking the exact same thing. The body, I don't remember being that thin for some reason. I don't know why. But the overall flavors are just so damn muted, especially when it's fresh. And this is probably somewhat fresh. 1016 is still way fresh for that beer because the thing is, the ethanol alcohols, when this thing ages, will get super raisins. Almost like you blended a, a Scotch Ale and a, an Imperial Stout together. And that's one thing that I have definitely been thinking of because I bought a case of 1050 and I was drinking on it, drinking on it. Like, God. This is getting to me super boring, and and I'm reflecting in it in this glass right now, because I thought I always thought 1050 was like, oh nine out of ten or whatever this and that. Boring now. I killed myself. I killed myself on it, and I'm. This is a shocking truth of that statement, and that's the thing is you learn stuff when you do these things. The information, you've had this one before, both fresh and aged. Indeed, I have. And thoroughly enjoy it, <clears throat> but I'm curious to see if you can guess while drinking it blind. This one, almost six months on age, will be received at the time of the, e the, the beer mail. Yeah, so it's kind of caught in between. Yeah, and it's not there yet. If you have 1050, make sure you age the fucking thing, because it's just worth it. It's such a better beer when it gets aged on it. Rum? Yeah. Well, I'm going to cut the thingy off. Cut the thingy off. Yeah. I mean, you guys know what it probably looks like. There it is. Cool. And I don't try to guess beers. I'm not going to try to do that. I'm not... Well, I can tell you, I know so much that it's got to be this beer. And it's probably this fucking brewery because this bottle looks like a dildo. And I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be like, oh, this is what I get, and find out what it is. That's about it. Anyway, I'm going to drink a 1050, and I'm really kind of like, oh, not another 1050. I don't think I ever want to, I don't think I want to drink another 1050 for at least five years, because I'm just pretty burnt out, and now that I know this is a 1050, I'm even more or less excited about drinking the rest of it. But it was still fun. This is Papa Fabrinus. Cheers. Thanks, Joe. Bye.